Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to Glasgow University. My name is Nora Nujur. I'm, I'm working at Adam, Adam Smith Business School. Uh, I'm going to go through with you partnership for innovation and giving you through new models emerging from literature as well as emerging from companies. You might think uh, those, if you are coming from the organization, what is new for partnership for innovation? Yes, not, maybe it's nothing new for you, but the way in which the organizations start collaborating uh, is new today for us. So let's look at some of the statistics. This is a new research conducted by World Economic Forum, and the results show 71% of uh, companies expect more than one-fourth of revenues will be generated through collaborative innovation. It means partnership for innovation in 2030. This research is based on European companies and uh, conducted with 450 European companies. So you could see the result now. And then collaborating of innovation is not just for established companies, it's important, but also for entrepreneurs and startups are, are uh, for startups are very important for high growth mode. And this uh, statistics also I can show you. If only 1% of UK businesses continue making investments in collaborative for innovation, we could create 230,000 jobs and more than 39 billion pounds additional turnover over three years. So this collaboration for innovation is very important for us. So today my talk is more looking at what are the opportunities for collaborative innovation? What are the alternative modes for collaborative innovation and examples for collaborative innovation? And let's look at some facts um, also. Large organizations started spending more money on collaboration than R&D. This is the new figures came out from British companies invested in SME collaboration by large organization 216 and 217, 21 billion pounds is much more than R&D investment. Does it show something for you? It's really important for, for your company um, to have collaboration. This another figure, again, it came out from World Economic Forum a research in 2030, companies are expecting to generate revenues more than 70%. Much more investment they are hoping to invest. Uh, can I ask you, what are the most innovative organizations for you? Most innovative organization in the world? Any organization you might think of? Google. Which one? Google, Google yeah. SpaceX. SpaceX, yes. Tesla is, yes, based on uh, Forbes uh, final most innovative companies, Tesla has been the most innovative company within the row for last two, three years. The reason why? Because they are collaborative innovation and they started building up ecosystem for their innovation, not just having a collaboration from one to one organization or one to two organization, but it's more ecosystem they started <laughs> developing. Okay. So if we think about the definition of collaboration or partnerships for innovation, it changed from partnering with just one organization with your suppliers or for your customers, it expanded to members of a group or community share ideas, information. And you could work to achieve common goals. If you are a social enterprise or technological uh, company, you can get all these ideas, not from your suppliers or customers, but is more variety of companies. Okay? So this is a new definition as you like. So what do you want to innovate? Uh, as a company, you need to ask yourself, uh, whom do you want to innovate? That's the most important question, key question for us. If we think about the innovation process, it's moving from concept to launching process, and previously, especially literature or academics, we are focusing on more concept development and how best ideas you could bring from your customers, suppliers. But these days, it changed to also from the launching process or development process. Okay? So you have to decide 
which part of innovation process you would like to collaborate and what kind of innovation you want to also go forward. Do you want to have product innovation, technological innovation, social innovation if you are a social enterprise or if you want to change the way how you are working as a business through your business model innovation and what kind of network partners you would like to have. Do you want to have um, just suppliers, customers, vendors, product users, enthusiastic? So you could involve all these people with the new terms of collaboration, what we started uh, thinking now. It's not just from your employees or researchers. Um, these are different collaborative models you could go through. This is coming from the literature. Uh, so you could see the moment um, in the beginning, maybe 20 years ago, you were going through ad hoc model. If you are a small SME, still you could go for ad hoc model and add open platform model also. When I say uh, ad hoc model, we are more focusing on collaboration or contractual work with maybe with your customers for a certain period of time or for an organization for a certain period of time, you don't involve the third parties and uh, there's no platform, maybe internal, internal uh, platform inside also. This is an ad hoc model. But when we go to the open platform model, we are talking about the companies are coming together to innovate. It doesn't need to be co-creation. It could be coming together under the same industry, people are coming for, for it together, form a consortium sometimes, even between the different industries. It's not with, it doesn't need to be within the same industry, uh, but you are sharing your knowledge among network participants. Okay? So is, what, is the, which, what kind of, uh, which kind of collaboration is right for you? So you need to decide what kind of collaboration you want to go for it. And you need to think about there is no one size fit all form of partnership. Again, this model is coming from the literature based on the uh, research. And depending on your innovation, what kind of innovation you want to go forward and what kind of investments as a company you would like to make, what kind of resource allocation you would like to have, uh, you can go for different uh, four boxes. The first one is like innovation project, we could say, if you want to improve your existing innovation through the collaboration, you can look at the holistically and you can, you don't need to make lots of investment. Maybe you have a um, few resource allocations, so you could have supplier collaboration or customer collaboration is the simple way most probably most of the organizations are doing. Uh, but on the other age, uh, you, you want to have uh, fulfill your specific innovation needs and for your collaboration, and you have, uh, you might go for extensive resource allocation. You could go for partnership agreement through joint venture or some other uh, kinds of consortium agreement you might go. But if you want to, if you have the great innovation, you want to uh, scale up your innovation, you have limited resources and limited budget, investment budget. We call this the smart procurement. So you could go for IP investment, you could expand your IP investment if you are a technology company, or you could partner with market um, red idea firms to reach to different um, industries. The next one also, you might go for smart direct investment. We are talking about this is a, again, a focused strategy, focused innovation you wanted to have, and you have a, a variety of resources and uh, good enough, um, good investment you might have. We call this smart direct investment. is more co-development, advanced innovation, or joint development, scaling up. A couple of the speakers we will go through with the smart direct investments, co-directions, or co-development as you like, um, you might go. Let's think about Lego. Lego was having huge problems in 2003 and they had a historic loss of 188 million euros 
That time in 2003, I was working in a Danish university uh, called Alborg University, and we were we had I ha we had the chance to go to Dan uh, the Lego company and work with this company just to see what was the problem for the company together with Copenhagen Business School and Danish Technical University researchers. Do you know what this company did first? Who did they blame? If you lose money, what do you do first as an organization? You fired the CEO. Of course, they did fire the CEO in 2003, first thing, because they blamed the CEO. Uh, yes, maybe CEO was uh, not very successful, but the problem, the main problem with Lego in 2003, they were thinking they are a very innovative company. They had a patent for 20 years, uh, patent uh, running patent, and expired in 2001, 2002. And they were not thinking about partnership. They were very, very close company before 2003, because they believe they are innovative company. But then we said, okay, you are very close. You need to start doing partnership. They appointed a new CEO who adopted open collaborative innovation model. And have you ever followed the Lego innovation? It's a very interesting innovation. They created a innovation ambassadors. It means the person who is very enthusiastic, users sometimes, and the families who have got kids, they wanted to play with the uh, Lego bricks at home. So they started giving all these nice feedbacks to the company. So this is one thing, user innovation, they started bringing in. And the community platforms, they started building up innovation platform. It means as a company, as an as a individual, enthusiastic or a professionalist, you can give all these ideas to Lego. So they build up all this community to get all these ideas not only just um, reaching to markets, but developing the ideas. And plus, they started developing new partnerships for innovation. Nowadays, when we have any block, blockbuster movies, what's happening? We have Batman movie, and before the Batman mo movie released, we see all these Legos on the shelves. So it's this kind of partnership they started doing to reach more people to the audience. And you could see they are not using only just the people, partners from their industries, but um, the people, organizations from other industries like Blockbuster. So they open up nicely, open collaborative innovation as you like. So it's a good example comes from. So whom do you want to innovate? You need to ask yourself as an organization. And uh, so far, I, sh I tried to show you a single company, how they could do the collaboration and partnership. But there are new models emerge with the corporate engagements, with big, corp big, big organizations, how they started doing. So look, let's look at a new research published uh, just recently in California Management Review, and they come up with this uh, new model, corporate engagement models with startups. And depending on what kind of innovation direction you would like to have, uh, and what kind of equity involvement you want to have, they, they, um, they group the companies. The first one, I'm sure you are familiar with, um, as an organization, is a big organization, you want to get all this innovative ideas from new startups, new ideas. We call this, if it's not uh, the current innovation you will continue with your core activities, core innovation activities you would, you would like to continue, but you want to bring some ideas from outside in. So we call this as an outside in perspective because it doesn't come directly to your company's innovation, but it will uh, complement and add new innovation angle to your organization. So as a company started doing the cor corporate venturing, a Google Venture is a good example. They put the equity also, investment. And there is also some companies, what they started doing, they are saying, okay, we have a great innovation portfolio. We want to expand this innovation portfolio <coughs> with new startups. 
So they, they started using this corporate incubation programs. They made the also equity and investments for these companies. Bosch Startup is a good example. And recently, there are new models just emerge um, and ensure uh, how you can bring in new fresh ideas to your companies. Has anybody heard about Ideal London Startup Post Accelerator? This is a Cisco, it's a unique uh, initiation program just launched last year. It's a short, um, just five or six months program. What they do, they are not expanding their current innovative portfolios, but they are bringing all these new innovative companies, startup companies. They don't make the investments, equity investments for these companies, but what they do, they provide, provide uh, a solutions or space for these companies for five months or six months is a small period of time. They give all this training to these companies. They give you the network space so you could do the networking and learn from each other. After five, six months, you will not have any space. Either you grow as a company or you will be out anyway. So that's the place they are offering um, Cisco. This is a new program uh, started with too many different big companies. The idea for them really coming um, outside in perspectives is a new technological or innovative ideas could bring in through this uh, new startups. And if it's necessary, they make the investment. Like for Cisco, one of the company, what they did uh, after for, uh, after five, four or five months, they didn't make any investments. Some of the other investors made the investments for that company. And they realized, I was speaking with Cisco manager last week. He said, oh, we, we realized we made a mistake and uh, we bought this company, acquired the company after investors made the money. Imagine it's a less than a year time, your startup company became a million, million pound through attending this accelerator program. The last um, program is like uh, examples for startups is equity involvement for startup programs is Inside Out program. Uh, and Microsoft Biz Spark is the other one. So you don't make any equity, but it's more expanding your um, innovation outside. Couple of examples again coming from Philips. Philips has done great also ecosystem development, especially for digital health uh, and some different partner programs. And I can show you also Cisco's new innovation engine program. This is program is showing all kinds of different partnership. So it's not just the ecosystem development, but different kinds of partnership you could see how they do. It's building, buying, partnering, investing, and co-developing together. And this is one of the innovation ecosystem at Philips Electronics. So you could say, you could see it's not only just accelerator or incubator programs they are doing, but they are bringing network of organizations. So different kind of partnerships, thinking strategically, they are bringing together. They are developing ecosystem. This is the stage where we are um, at the moment in academically also inside the also practitioner for practitioners. Let's look at Google's innovation ecosystem. Again, there are different uh, contents uh, you could see, you could bring uh, consumers, innovators, and advisors, you are bringing everything together. This is the model, it came out from the literature, just saying what you could do as a company. You need to look at yourself first. There are some good models like for corporations, but as a small company, if you are a small company or social uh, entrepreneur, what you could do, you could see how ready you are for partnership and what kind of partnership model you would like to go and how you could pioneer um, your partnership through the innovation. You might think, okay, some of the examples I gave you maybe is too much, it's not gonna work. Yes but as previously how many years ago also people are, were saying TV is not going to work, computers are not going to work. These are the quotes I would like to leave you to read. Thank you very much.